Revelation 9, also called the second wow. In the shadowy depths of the biblical narrative where prophecies intertwine with the fabric of spiritual warfare, the book of Revelation stands as a cryptic herald of the end times. Among its vivid and often terrifying visions, the depiction of the four angels bound at the river Euphrates captures the imagination with a chilling grip. These celestial beings mentioned briefly yet poignantly in Revelation 9 verses 14 to 15 serve as harbingers of divine wrath, poised to unleash chaos upon a third of mankind. This essay ventures into the heart of this enigmatic prophecy, dissecting its layers and exploring its implications for both ancient and modern believers. Revelation 9 verses 14 to 15 serves as the primary scriptural reference for our study of the four angels. Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were released, who had been held ready for the hour, the day, the month, and the year to kill a third of mankind. This passage is not just a forecast of doom, but a pivotal moment in John's vision. The description here is stark and functional. Four angels, previously restrained, now unleashed with the purpose of bringing about catastrophic destruction. Each angel's release is timed with divine precision, emphasizing the inevitability and the divine ordination of these events. The symbolic nature of Revelation often allows for multiple interpretations. In the case of the four angels, these beings could symbolize various historical, spiritual, or eschatological concepts. For instance, some scholars suggest that the angels represent historical empires that controlled the Euphrates region and had a significant impact on Israel's history. Alternatively, from a spiritual perspective, these angels may symbolize the forces of divine judgment that God mobilizes at the appointed time. This symbolic interpretation helps believers understand the nature of divine justice and the sovereignty of God over history and time. The Euphrates River is not just a geographical feature, it is a symbol loaded with prophetic significance. Historically, it marked the boundary of the Promised Land and was often associated with military conquests and divine promises. Its mention in Revelation 9 thus ties back to numerous Old Testament prophecies and narratives, enriching the apocalyptic forecast with deep historical roots. Understanding the Euphrates in its historical and prophetic context allows us to better grasp the significance of the angels being bound there. It symbolizes a limit or a boundary, both physically and spiritually, beyond which divine judgment is restrained until the appointed time. Theological Perspectives, Diverse Viewpoints The interpretation of Revelation's four angels varies widely across different Christian denominations. Catholic theologians often emphasize the communal and ecclesiastical implications of the prophecy, viewing the angels as a call to repentance and spiritual preparation. Protestant scholars, on the other hand, might focus more on the individualistic aspects of the prophecy, considering it a personal warning and a call to personal faithfulness. Orthodox interpretations might blend mystical and historical views, seeing the angels as both real and symbolic, with a focus on the cosmic battle between good and evil. Each perspective offers unique insights, enriching our understanding of the text. Prophetic Significance Implications for Today In contemporary Christian thought, the prophecy of the four angels resonates with ongoing theological debates about the end times. For many believers, these verses are a stark reminder of the world's impermanence and the urgency of spiritual readiness. The teachings also influence how churches formulate their eschatological teachings and prepare their congregations for what they perceive as the impending return of Christ. This part of the prophecy thus serves not only as a theological point of interest, but also as a practical influence on daily faith practices and church doctrines. When we place the four angels in the context of other religious traditions, we observe intriguing parallels and contrasts. 
For instance, in the Bible, there are references to angels and a river that plays a crucial role in the end times. Comparing these can provide a broader understanding of how the Bible views cosmic events and divine judgment. This comparative approach not only highlights the uniqueness of the Christian apocalyptic vision, but also fosters a deeper appreciation and respect for the eschatological beliefs within the Bible. Such an analysis can help promote deeper study and understanding of biblical texts in a pluralistic world. Reflecting personally on the prophecy of the four angels, I find it a compelling reminder of the transient nature of human power and the ultimate sovereignty of God. In a world often dominated by human-centered narratives of progress and control, this prophecy disrupts our complacency and calls us to recognize a higher power at work. This personal insight underscores the relevance of ancient prophecies in modern times, inviting believers to ponder the deeper spiritual truths that govern our existence and shape our destiny. It challenges us to live with an awareness of the divine timetable and to align our lives accordingly. The four angels at the river Euphrates, as depicted in the book of Revelation, continue to intrigue and inspire those who delve into their mystery. This essay has traversed through scriptural analyses, theological debates, and personal reflections, each layer adding depth to our understanding of these enigmatic figures. The legacy of these angels is woven into the fabric of Christian eschatology, reminding us of the profound interplay between divine justice, historical processes, and human destiny. Their story is a call to spiritual vigilance, a beacon for those navigating the complexities of faith in a tumultuous world. For those readers eager to explore further, the appendices provide a detailed list of scriptures, theological works, and scholarly articles that have informed this study. The references are curated to enhance understanding and offer avenues for deeper exploration into the fascinating topic of the four angels and their enduring impact on Christian thought. This comprehensive approach ensures that the essay is an informative read and a valuable resource for continued study and reflection. Whether for academic purposes, personal growth, or spiritual enrichment, the insights and resources provided here aim to serve a wide range of interests and needs in the study of biblical prophecy. As we delve deeper into the book of Revelation, another striking vision emerges, this time an army of 200 million horsemen. Revelation September 15, 20 vividly describes these riders bringing fire, smoke, and sulfur a powerful and terrifying image that has captured the imagination of theologians and scholars alike and pause 3s. The passage reads, So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour, day, month, and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. Pause 3s. What could this apocalyptic vision signify? Some interpret it as a literal prophecy of future events, a massive army arising from Asia to bring unprecedented destruction. Others see it as symbolic, representing the forces of chaos and evil unleashed upon the world in the end times. Pause 3s. The imagery of fire, smoke, and sulfur evokes the destructive power of modern warfare, leading some to speculate that these horsemen could symbolize advanced military technologies, the horsemen of Revelation, the four angels, kill. Verse 15. How do they do it? The answer is given immediately in verse 16. They do it utilizing the troops of cavalry, NRSVA, translated as armies of horsemen in the American Standard Version and army of horsemen in the King James Version. The armies of horsemen kill, not personally, but using 200 million plague-filled horses. These 200 million horses represent multitudes of Asian peoples who travel out of Asia into the rest of the world carrying three plagues. These plagues are what kill a third of humanity. Why Asian people? Because the four angels are bound and released at the great river Euphrates. To the east is almost all of Asia as presently defined, with about 60% of the world's population, 
as of June 2022. The 200 million horsemen are, I believe, the armies of God of Revelation 1911, 21 or a part of them, armies of angels who serve God. They are not the bearers of the three plagues with which God determines to punish the hardened sinners of the little while in hopes of persuading them to repent. Instead, their function is to providentially stir up the Asian horses peoples who harbor the plagues to move out into the whole world, carrying the plagues and communicating them to masses of hardened sinners, providentially opening ways for the carriers to accomplish just that. Ways Asian peoples themselves may very well have been created by becoming, in the last stage of the little while, the overpowering commercial conglomerate of the world, thereby perhaps the world's overpowering cultural, political, and military entity. On the timeline of humanity and the earth, they quickly take advantage of their immense population to break down all restrictions about the right and power to travel wherever they want to, with no limits on how many of their multitudinous peoples can do it. 10 million to the USA in a month if they want to, 30 million to Europe, 100 million to Africa, not with the premeditated intention of spreading the three plagues that kill a third of humanity, but being the instruments of God's severe punishment of hardened sinners as a last resort on his part to get them to repent. Of course, any person with adequate knowledge of the Bible knows that the God of life and love does not want to kill any human being, but rather desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 4. In this vision, death comes to the hardened unrepentant, not by physical earthly wars, but by the three plagues. The actual COVID-19 plague, which began in late 2019 and continues to the present, June 21, 2022, just about perfectly illustrates what can unexpectedly and rapidly occur on a worldwide scale. Where did it start? Specifically, it is in China and on the continent of Asia. According to the latest United Nations estimates, Asia's population was 4,718,938,577 as of Tuesday, June 21, 2022. This is equivalent to 59.76% of the total world population.